A very good morning to one and all. This is Ranjana and I welcome you to this video lecture of English Flamingo. Today I will start the chapter 5 Indigo. This chapter, this lesson is written by Louis Feature. So now let us revise the lesson. In this module, I will keep uh, discussing about the author, then I will explain the summary and then the conclusion of this chapter. Now let us revise the lesson. This chapter especially belongs to Mahatma Gandhi, a prominent political leader of India known as Bapu, the father of the nation. His role in the freedom movement of India is unforgettable. About the author, Louis Feature was born on 29 February 1896 in Philadelphia, Peninsulavia, Splenislavania, USA. First he worked as a school teacher, then he served as a volunteer in the British Army during the First World War and then he made a career as a journalist and wrote for the New York Times, the Saturday Review and for the European and Asian publications. As a journalist, he lived through and reported the Second World War. He was a Jewish American who was greatly influenced by Gandhi's use of non-violence and spiritualism as political tools. He wrote highly acclaimed books on Gandhi and Lenin. He died at the age of 73 and on 15 January 1970 in Princeton, New Jersey, USA. Now about the chapter. This chapter is an excerpt or part from Louis Feature's famous book, The Life of Mahatma Gandhi. The writer observed Gandhi's work to fight for the cause of the voiceless, downtrodden Indians who reeled under the rule of the indifferent, oppressive, colonial British rule. Indigo is one of the many episodes of Gandhi's long political struggle. The chapter describes the Champaran visit of Mahatma Gandhi, which was undertaken casually on the entreaty of a poor peasant, Rajkumar Shukla. In the expectations that it would last a few days, occupied almost a year of Gandhi's life. The story describes Gandhi's struggle for the cause of the sharecroppers of Bihar and how he asks the Britishers to leave the country. It highlights the leadership shown by Gandhi to secure justice for oppressed people. Now about the characters. So basically there are many characters in this chapter. One of the main character here is Gandhi. He is a prominent political leader of India and as you all of you know that he is also known as the father of the nation. Rajkumar Shukla, a poor, emancipated but resolute peasant of Champaran. Rajendra Prasad, a lawyer who later became the first president of India. J.P. Kriplani, a professor of the Arts College in Mujapparpur. Malkani, a government school teacher. Sir Edward Gate, the Lieutenant Governor. Mahadev Desai and Narhari Parekh, they are volunteers teacher. Kasturba Bai, as you all you know that he is, she is Gandhi's wife and Devdas, Gandhi's youngest son. Now the main points of this chapter. First of all, Rajkumar Sukla's request to Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi starts narrating the incident which made him decide to urge the departure of the British from India. This incident occurred in 1917. Gandhi had gone to the December 1916 annual convention of the Indian National Congress Party in Lucknow. A poor, emancipated and illiterate peasant named Rajkumar Shukla came to him and requested to come to his district, Champaran. The peasants of Champaran were sharecroppers and Rajkumar Shukla was one of them. 
He was a resolute man who had come to the Congress session to complain about the injustice of the landlord system in Bihar. At that time, Gandhi had an appointment and had to visit some other parts of India. Rajkumar Shukla patiently accompanied him everywhere. Impressed by his determination, Gandhi agreed to accompany him to Champaran after his Calcutta visit. When Gandhi went to Calcutta, after some months, he found Shukla already present there. Now what happened? Gandhi on his way to Champaran. Now this is second episode of this chapter. While going to Champaran, they went to Patna to Rajendra Prashad house. He was a lawyer of Patna who represented the case of sharecroppers in the court. He was out of town. The servants knew Shukla, so they allowed them to stay there. But Gandhi was not permitted to draw water from the well, taking him to be an untouchable. Gandhi decided to visit Muzaffarpur before Champaran. To obtain more complete information about the condition prevalent in the area, he sent a telegram to Professor J. B. Kripalani, who received them at the station with a large body of students. Gandhi stayed there for two days in the home of Professor Malkani, a government teacher. According to Gandhi, it was an extraordinary thing in those days because in smaller localities, the Indians were afraid to show sympathy for advocates of home rule. When the sharecroppers of Champaran came to know about the arrival of Gandhiji for their sake, they came rushing to Mujapurpur to meet their champion. Mujapurpur lawyers met Gandhiji. They told him about their cases and reported the size of their fee. Gandhi chided them for collecting high fee. He concluded that the peasants were so crushed and fear-stricken that going to law courts was useless. The real relief for them was to be free from the fear. Now the third episode, the sharecropping arrangement. Most of the arable land in Champaran was divided into large estates owned by Englishmen and worked by Indian tenants. The chief commercial crop was indigo. The owner forced them to plant 15% of their holdings with indigo and surrender the entire indigo harvest as rent. In the meantime, Germany had developed synthetic indigo. British landlord freed the Indian farmers from the 15% of arrangement but asked them to pay compensation. Meanwhile, the news of synthetic indigo reached the sharecroppers. They felt cheated and became resentful. They wanted their money back. At this point, Gandhi arrived in Champaran. Now the fourth episode, Gandhi's movement in Champaran. This is the very main episode of this chapter. Gandhi started gathering details. He visited the secretary of the British Landlord Association who refused to give information to an outsider. Then he visited the British Commissioner of Tirhut Division who advised him to leave Tirhut. Instead of leaving Tirhut, Gandhiji proceed to Motihari, where he was greeted by a vast multitude. Using a house as headquarter, he continued his investigation. He also decided to go and see a peasant who had been maltreated. Gandhi was ordered to come back. He did so. Thereafter, he was served with an official notice to quit Champaran. He signed it and wrote that he would disobey the order. He was summoned to appear in the court the next day. All night, Gandhi remained awake. He wired Rajendra uh, Prashad to come from Bihar with influential friends. He also wired a full report to the Viceroy. 
the news of gandhi being in trouble with the authorities spread fast thousands of peasants came from motihari and demonstrated in the front of the court house this was the beginning of their liberation from the fear of the british the official felt powerless but gandhi ji helped them to regulate the crowd this was the proof that the british authority was no longer unchall- unchallengeable the government was baffled the prosecutor wanted to the trial to be postponed he protested against the delay he read a statement pleading guilty he clarified that he broke the law to render humanitarian and national service he claimed to have no disrespect for law but greater respect for voice of his conscience the government was confused and ultimately set him at liberty but kept the judgment reserved rajendra prasad and other lawyers reached there they held a discussion with gandhi about what would they do if gandhi ji sentenced prison they consulted and told gandhi that they were ready to follow him to jail gandhi ji exclaimed the battle of champaran is won this line is very important in this chapter because the battle of champaran is not here at least won but here gandhi ji already declared that the battle of champaran is won because the utmost uh, priority of this champaran movement is that to unite the people against the britishers so this was happening the lieutenant governor dropped the case against gandhi this was the first triumph of civil disobedience in modern india gandhi ji and his associates moved forward to conduct an inquiry into the complaints of farmers the whole area was filled with the air of investigation and protest the notes were made and documents were collected after four meetings with the lieutenant governor an official commission of inquiry was made it consisted of landlords government officials and gandhi as an only representatives of peasants a lot of evidence was collected against the landlords they were left no choice but to agree in principle to refund the money to the peasants they expected gandhi to ask ask for full amount but he demanded just 50% they offered him 25% and to their amazement gandhi ji agreed to it he explained that the amount of refund was less important than the fact that the landlord had been obliged to surrender part of the money and with it part of their prestige now the peasants saw that they had rights they learnt a lesson of courage so gandhi ji finally here united the peasants from all over the country and they learned a lesson of courage and bravery there now they are ready to fight with the britishers gandhi ji efforts to remove the social and cultural backwardness of champaran now this is the another episode of this chapter after winning the war against a war for the champaran peasants Gandhi ji wanted to remove the social and cultural backwardness in the villages of Champaran. Health conditions were also uh, miserable. He appealed for volunteers to help. Several people came forward for this noble purpose. His wife and his youngest son also arrived to help. Primary schools were opened. Kasturba Bai taught the ashram rule on personal cleanliness and community sanitation. Gandhi ji got a doctor to volunteer his service for 6 months now this champaran episode was a turning point in gandhi ji life champaran episode was a turning point in gandhi ji life he declared that britishers could not order him about in his own country in whatever he did he tried to mold a new free indian who could stand on his own feet and thus make india free now the very last 
theme or you can also say a lesson learnt from this chapter is that a lesson in self reliance s e l f r e l i a n c e charles freer andrews a devoted follower of gandhi came to bid him goodbye before going on a tour of duty to the fiji islands gandhi's lawyer friends wanted him to help them gandhi ji strongly opposed this suggestion by saying that this showed the weakness of their heart when the cause was just they must rely upon themselves to win the battle gandhi ji in this way taught them a lesson in self reliance so overall in this chapter we learnt that a goal achieved here a lesson for self reliance indian independence and in this way they helped to the share croppers all these are interwoven this champaran episode is a very turning is a very important and it is a very good episodes in gandhi ji life as well as indian life because this uh, make us realize that how uh, brave we are and the farmers here learned how brave they were so now this is overall summary of this chapter so so my next video will be on i think i will explain the another chapter till my next video keep listening keep reading and stay healthy and stay safe thank you